Welcome everybody to episode 14 of Listen In. It's September and during this month, we're going to be shifting away from more traditional art forms and thinking about the democratization of art. Today, we focus on public art and street art and particularly the nature of street art in India, how it engages the public, builds community, takes art to a larger audience and what does it really mean for the street to be a canvas? I'm thrilled to have with us Arjun Bell and Anif Qureshi, co-founders of Start India Foundation. Start was founded in 2014 and is a not-for-profit that works on art projects in public spaces. Essentially what they do is taking art out of traditional gallery spaces and into the cities that we live in and embedding it within. Start India has spearheaded urban art projects across 11 cities in India. Arjun Bal is co-founder and director at Start India, along with Anip Qureshi, and runs Gorilla Art and Design. He also co-founded XXL Collective that curates designs and produces art for private commissions, brands, and institutions. Anip Qureshi is an artist, designer, and artistic director and co-founder of Start India. Anip has worked on projects which focus on the vernacular typography of India, and is committed to bringing back attention to such art. His work has been exhibited at the London Design Biennale, the Venice Biennale, the Centre Pompidou, among others. In 2016, GQ named Hanif one of the 50 most influential young Indians. Arjun and Hanif, it's taken a long time, but I'm finally so glad that we're all here together and collaborating between Start and Sunaparanta. And thank you for making the time to be with us today. And with that, I will hand over to Leandre, who will moderate the conversation. Thank you. Shita, Arjun, and Hanif, I'm so excited that we're having this discussion. Street art is a subject that is particularly close, especially the idea that art cannot be static, but it must be living and breathing and shaping itself to the spaces that it inhabits and the people that it engages with. So let's start the discussion by trying to understand what street art is in the Indian context and how it fits within the landscape of our cities. Right, thank you uh, for having us. Uh, I think it's been long, uh, long pending. I'm going to like uh, start with the presentation right away and then we can have uh, sessions for answer on uh, questions. Uh, we call it, this is not street art. I mean, because there's, I mean, there's a whole uh, uh, thing about the definition of what's graffiti and what's street art. Uh, which a lot of people kind of like mistake it for vice versa. So uh, if we, yeah, if we kind of like look at uh, the history of graffiti and street art and like, I've kind of like just put two little charts to understand like, you know, where these, they kind of like close to each other, but they are kind of like very different. And also they both have a different kind of minds. Obviously the image, what you see on the right hand side is done by a graffiti writer was kind of like, you know, but, uh, but at the same time, they have a different kind of motives and uh, intentions when they, when they work in, in public spaces. So uh, in Indian context, uh, like what we see, like this, what you see behind, like is a, was a, is a kind of like tags is what you call in, in the graffiti language, where graffiti is a basically a graffiti writer while street is kind of like street artist is a, is a different uh, uh, tribe altogether. But most of the time, the, most of the street artist starts from graffiti and then uh, uh, shifts to street art later. So, uh, so now this particular image is by an artist called Martin Watson. Um, uh, so the reason why I'm showing is because on the right hand side, you see like what's out there is is graffiti and that's like the art of writing while uh, the guy was kind of like unveiling it and when you do this it kind of like becomes street art well uh, so that's this is kind of like a combination where one can kind of like in one image you can see that what street and what graffiti and now yeah if you go next to the Indian context uh, the guy who's painting there his name is Bond is a German uh, graffiti writer who kind of like been coming to India since 2006 2007 uh, and been painting at different uh, places in India. He's also like one of the guys who's uh, influenced graffiti culture uh, in India to to begin with. And he's actually painted uh, 
all different parts of India, like starting from like Ladakh, which you see on the on the right hand side of the screen, to like you know uh, bottom in, in Dharavi, to like Jodhpur, to like Kerala. Basically, he's painted many different places over the like five seven years, uh, and uh, I had like privilege to meet him, and then we kind of like had this uh, uh, as as the graffiti kind of like moved on in two thousand fourteen. Uh, we, we came together and we did a small little festival in this urban village called Shapurjat. Uh, this is in, uh, in New Delhi. So this, is a, this was a festival which kind of like uh, uh, the first festival where we uh, got our different artist friends from different parts of India and internationally uh, to paint in this urban village. The idea was to kind of like come out and paint. Uh, there was no uh, foundation or anything at, at that point. Well, everyone's kind of like came together for a passion, and that's how we kind of like uh, later on when we were when we were doing the uh, this festival, we also had a, an opportunity to uh, work on Delhi Police Headquarter, uh, which is uh, and in at ITO. When we approached a commissioner, we approached with a, a portrait of Gandhi because every police station has, has Gandhi and we were kind of very sure that if we propose Gandhi to the police commissioner, most probably he will not uh, deny. And uh, uh, yeah, he agreed to it. And the reason why we, we, while on the one side, we're kind of like also doing graffiti, but on the other side, we also kind of like uh, 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 painting Gandhi on the police headquarters. So, we kind of like wanted to have this have this project as a beginning of like street uh, partnership between government and street art and kind of like start looking at street art from a very different uh, point of view and kind of like with this whole uh, connotations of like you know negative connotations with graffiti comes with so and, when uh, sorry to interrupt you hanif mm -hmm. so at the time that that start or, or this collective or gathering of artists came into being, was there already an understanding of what street art was? Or it was just, I mean, you guys just came out and started painting these, these neighborhoods and walls. How did that function? It was fairly new at that point. We actually had to kind of like uh, convince people that we want to paint the wall, but it was very difficult for people to digest the fact that uh, why would someone paint the wall for free and why would you do it and like all these kind of like questions uh, there like must be some like even while we were painting this when we went and said that we want to paint Gandhi they were like why would you do it do you like do you guys want to win a Nobel Prize or something to like you know they, that was kind of literally the, the uh, question from the police commissioner but we wanted to kind of like bring art in front and it was also like a, a school of artists uh, in India and internationally who's kind of like focus, whose studio is actually the city. And that's a different practice, which is kind of like coming into place. So it was a little difficult for people to understand. But once we did it, it became more uh, easier. Can you explain to us this idea of the studio, the, the city as the studio, which is actually quite different from, from a traditional idea of what an artist studio is supposed to be like, where it's contained, um, you know, you have control over it. Whereas in the city as a studio, there is completely volatile, the dynamics change, the publics change. Can you explain that? Also the street artists have a, uh, the idea is to put your work out in public space. In the beginning, they were kind of like most of the time, whenever you saw a wall painted, there were always like some social issues related uh, things, but these artists, one which we work with, are professional street artists. Their job is to kind of like uh, paint different cities in different uh, times. And they're kind of constantly moving uh, from different parts parts in the world. So they actually, for some artists, the world cities are their studios because they kind of like keep on leaving their marks uh, in different cities. In the Indian context, it back then it was like a fairly uh, new thing there were a handful of people who kind of like being part of it and the moment has been growing growing since then uh, so yeah i don't know if that answers your question but yeah it's kind of like a, a different way of looking at your practice where you put 
whatever you feel is out in the street and then people will react and respond so you said that when you first did your i mean when you did your first festival before start was even a foundation you had to engage with these public authorities how did you explain that you know you wanted to paint the walls and i mean did they did they realize that that street art has these rebellious undertones but they were also fine with it because communities were anyways coming together and being engaged somehow uh the, so in the western world the graffiti uh is like it's considered a, like you know for almost an act of vandalism uh we also have the same thing we follow uh the west bengal act which basically started from calcutta where a lot of people complained of having graffiti outside their wall and uh, that's how this law came into place and and later on different states adopted it so delhi also like adopts the west bengal act where under that act anything doing in public space is uh, could be an offense uh, and you can could be like jailed up to 6 months for that uh, and it's actually uh, implemented uh, very hard during the election times but otherwise uh, like within the graffiti context earlier it was a little difficult uh, where uh, but post swachh bharat movement and post like lot of street art and whatever it's become much more easier to go out on street and paint uh, while compared to like the western world it's always been like a a, a very difficult um, yeah difficult relation between the graffiti writers and the authorities so then how did you know when did you decide that the collective was going to be a foundation and soon after our uh, festival we we gathered uh, so that's akshat this me this julia amroji this tanish thomas and so we all of us kind of like actually met on uh, uh, the terrace of arjun's office back then and we said that if we we have to kind of like take this forward and we have to kind of uh, form a, a see proper organization which is going to like run this while we did the festival before any kind of foundation or anything and this could have actually gone any it could have gone the commercial way as well but we work in public spaces we had to make sure that we take the non profit approach and not take any any other approach because it we have to uh, we are seeding kind of like the plants of the moment and it has to be done on a uh, yeah non profit ground and um can you explain to us how uh, you know what are some of the projects that that you have done and produced over over these years you started by saying that you had some international artists already in your first festival has that carried through as well so we basically kind of like came into uh, 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 after like these five six years uh, these are some of the things which we which we did in particular uh if you go the next one arjun i can say like so these are some of the like uh, categories which we work on which is basically establishing art districts in india where identifying an area and converting that into a permanent art space we do like experiential exhibitions at like unexpected uh, locations we also create like landmarks uh, within the cities by identifying places in the city and converting them into a landmark we do like public installations we also like do a hand painted type where we kind of like work with sign painters and uh work with uh, different uh, yeah different sign painters across india the art in transit is basically working with metro stations uh and different like modes of uh, transit uh so today we're going to like mostly focus on on the art districts part of it and uh, yeah arjun's going to take us through uh, lodi art district All right. Before uh, Arjun begins, I, uh, Arjun, I would like to know, and I'm sure our audience is very curious to know, how do you intervene into a public space, considering that each location has its specific geography or history or publics that live and work at these sites? So, how do you negotiate the different power structures and the tensions at a specific at a specific site? Uh, I think uh, over the years, uh, obviously. we also took some time to understand uh, but over the years uh, we built some body of work so uh, at least with the first one or two festivals and that really immensely helped us because 
uh, going into a more structured format became easier. And also getting an understanding of how we want the work to be placed. Also the placemaking of some of these art districts and spaces uh, had to be done carefully, uh, understanding the, where it's located in the city, uh, understanding who are the stakeholders and trying to see if they would like to work and make a difference to that space. Uh, also understanding what the, what the geography and, and, and the space is, right? Like for example, Lodi Art District in itself, um, you know, so, you know, it's, it's something which we started in 2015 and it was literally started with a small mural. Uh, and then we kind of realized that, you know, this Lodi Art District has that potential because if you see the structure of the space, it, it's bang in the middle of Delhi, kind of. Um, it's also uh, surrounded by spaces which are very, very important, uh, be it uh, be it the historical importance or the gardens in the park or the public spaces or cultural spaces around it. For example, um, the, the uh, uh, Habitat Center and other spaces, as well as a colony which was built with, 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 with a, a kind of a, uh, 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 um, the, the building facades were kind of the same, it's homogeneous. And it was pedestrian friendly. So I think that was the first tick off that, listen, there is probably an opportunity to do something in Lodi. Uh, and, and it's, and that's how we kind of started speaking to the authorities and understanding, and, you know, the first mural didn't go too well or the artwork, there was a Japanese artist who came and worked. Uh, uh, but you know, but we tell learned. Us, tell us about that. Why didn't it go too well? I mean, I'm, I'm forgetting the stories, but you know, she had done Rani Ki Jhasi. So, uh, uh you know, a kind of a woman in, uh, empowerment one. So some people did take offense on it and then. There were issues, so many a times, you know, she's come all the way from Japan to work. Uh, we start working, it's fine, but, you know, then we get stopped for permission, we show our permission, then some other issue props up. So, on, you know, there was that negotiation uh, uh, and understanding. It was almost like we felt like we were doing a criminal act, uh, the, the way it was being seen. Uh, while people just can vandalize anyway, you know, you can go to Lodi Colony, there are thousands of posters. Uh, of um, political parties or people selling things and now also on our murals. So, so, you know, that, 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 but I think what happened was that when they've really found intent, uh, we were referred to Delhi Urban Arts Commission uh, saying that, okay, these guys are serious and they really want to convert Lodi into an art district. And uh, since Delhi Urban Arts Commission works in the Lutens Delhi, uh, we must refer this. It's a large project uh, to, to Delhi Urban Arts Commission. And we went there and we presented to all the people over there and we spoke about uh, what we want to do and I think it went fairly well um, you know a lot of the recommendations they had given were valid a lot of them which we didn't feel would work in a context of street uh, we tried to renegotiate or try to do things differently and then they saw the light of it uh, and I think that was really good because suddenly you have Delhi Urban Arts Commission also saying okay to a project you know it's a it's a start of sorts and you have the building owners which is CPWD and that kind of began, began that journey. It was a very organically done thing and things had to happen. And there was intent from our side. So now we are in Lodi colony. We are in the fifth year. Uh, we've, we've built year on year, um, you know, uh, just to show you it's, it's like that. One side we have Khanna market, which is a little bit more, uh, more, you know, your daily shops or groceries, your vegetables, your cycle shops. And the other side you have Merchan market as well, which is a little bit more hip, hip kind of space with, um, uh, so, you know, and then we kind of started dividing our art also, like, you know, we try to do for both sides because there are different demographic demographics and people and different socioeconomic people coming from, uh, to both the markets differently. And we began in uh, 2015 and then we kind of did a kind of inauguration last year and we have now 55 murals over there, uh, and almost, uh, about 20 different nationalities, including Indian artists have kind of, uh, contributed to this. Uh, space. Uh, and you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see because uh, when you're doing this process, you don't realize, uh, will it be, will people come and see, will people have tours, will the people talk about it? And really happy to see that, you know, at any given point of time, you go there, there are people doing tours, there are indigenous tours, the neighborhoods are happy, uh, the, the building owners are happy, they're proud of it. Uh, you know, uh, it's also one of the best places to shoot a pre-wedding uh, photo photo shoot. So we get that as well. Um, and 
you know, and that the process was really important, right? I mean, we started 2018 with the community projects over there. Uh, this time we tried to better ourselves because previously our efforts were not as strong. But the, those community projects, I think, really has made now Lodi what it is and added much more layers and much more depth to the project. So uh, 2018, we did this festival uh, over there uh, where we contributed a lot more murals. We had we done these pamphlets and, uh, you know, a kind of a, uh, which we distributed to 7,000 households. So the first pamphlet was basically what we want to do and what our intent is. And, you know, soon we're going to be giving you another pamphlet, which is like a questionnaire. And uh, we want you to fill up the things you want to do, any grievances, any changes, what do you like, your dislikes. And we kind of collected a group of people who were interested, who, who called us on WhatsApp and, you know, they became a part of the group uh, to do these outreach programs as well. And, you know, we started with a project which is called Saat Saat, uh, <clears throat> means together. And essentially, we, we took on certain words from the community engagement. And, uh, and those words were kind of put with the help of the community. This project happened every weekend. So kids came every weekend to work with the artist for about a, a month and a half. And, you know, so the whole mural was made with their words, with the key words. They thought about togetherness and about oneness and about what they feel about Lodi Colony. So, so Arjun, uh, just to understand the process, when you work, especially with international artists, and I think you work, or, or even with Indian artists working at a specific site, um, you go through the process of negotiation and approvals from the authorities, and then it comes to the, the site, and you, there's still the negotiation with the local communities that are there. What is the process like? Does the artist send you a proposal, and that idea is just parachuted, or it still needs to, you know, you still need to discuss it with the local communities? This is what we're doing. Like you said, this is our intent. This is what we're going to do. This is what the mural is going to be like. Do they have suggestions? How involved are they in that process of, of creation and production of the work? And, uh, the, so the process actually starts way before. Uh, basically, a full research about the city, about what we are doing, our body of work, what we want to achieve. And the curator gives a curation note as well. And I think that's where it kind of starts. And it's also given an option that you want to work with the community, does your work, can we involve people uh, from the community? Uh, how would you like to work? And from there, you know, depending on the artist, they pick up on stories and narrations and narratives offline, which is which before they come. And they, we kind of create a small kind of a, uh, a, a kind of a document of what they intend to do. But a lot of times when they really want to work with the communities and they want to deal with the communities one-on-one, -on -one, then they do come spend good five, six days before they create their final sketch. Uh, because a lot of them is also, the sketches are influenced by the community, by either their words or their thoughts. Um, and, and that's the process which we like to do, right, essentially. Uh, and I think we have a buy-in from the community. We don't really need to show what we kind of uh, do. We are, we are responsible about, uh, the foundation is responsible and does not do anything religious or political. Uh, you know, uh, we want to, um, we, we try to avoid these kind of topics as well, or we don't want to hurt any uh, uh, anyone's intent per se. So, you know, it's by far the, the, uh, the, the, the kind of stories uh, or the, by the, the production of the works or the artworks are kind of generally on a really thoughtful, happy, picking up certain issues, uh, issues uh, as well, but also empowering uh, is the kind of narrative we'd like to obviously produce. Are there instances where the artists need to adapt or modify a work to a particular site? Has that ever happened? Oh yes, that's uh, that's happened quite a few times. Uh, someone has taken offense. I remember an artist called Dalist from China back in 2015. He created this really beautiful composition of various crows, right? Now, now uh, it just so happened the shopkeepers around that said, you know, black crows are not good luck for them at least. So. You know, there's this whole conversation which had to start and what we need to do about this. And because it was only, it, it was, everyone was happy, but you know, it was that five, 10, 15% of people, but that they had to be heard. But I think finally they made peace with it. They spoke to the artist, they understood why he was doing it or what the thought behind it was. Uh, so in that case, we got lucky. We didn't have to do it. Uh, but there have been instances, uh, you know, where after doing the work, the, the, the building owner is like, it's, it's too, too much for me and, and all of that. But I think that's the process, you know, while they see it on paper, it looks different, but as soon, as soon as you see it on a building, then you realize uh, what it is. And then you kind of sometimes very, very rarely have a second thought 
And I think at that time, it's, it's a difficult position because the, someone who's worked months on that project and mm -hmm. now suddenly a part of the community or one person does not want it. So that again calls for a dialogue and seeing how we can really figure that out. But obviously if it's taking really offense and it's really troubling someone, then we obviously try to request the artist to either modify it or completely remove it. Um, but that's not happened too often. And how difficult, is it difficult working with, with, with foreign artists considering that many times I suppose they've never been to India and maybe when they, they come to the, to the city or site where they're working, you know, they don't expect to see the place as it is. I mean, it's quite visually anarchic, our, our cities, and the nature is still quite dichotomous. So how do they, and they come with their own identities and their own context. So, so how is, how does that work? I think most of us, artists who come so far have, at least I would say 90, 80 to 90%, I mean, super happy and super excited about India and the colors and the craft and, uh, and you know, they're fascinated about what's happening. Uh, also with this project and the scale and the diversity, you know. So they all, I, most of the times I've seen if someone comes with a very positive attitude, it's very positive. You know, they make best friends with the team. They literally want to take and hire a team back to their country because, you know, as Indians, we do a little extra. Uh, we go beyond our scope of work uh, and, you know, we pull strings and make things happen and bring the lift in odd, odd times. So we are very flexible in that and that's the fun of it, right? Because it's not commercial for us. I mean, it's very important that we vibe with the artist as well because finally, we're not making money out of this. We're putting art out there and, and the process needs to be beautiful and if that's beautiful. Uh, the outcome will be beautiful, right? So uh, it's, it, that's, that's how we treat it differently. But yes, there are cases where people do get disappointed. Uh, and, uh, you know, quite often the project is not as good, finally, you know, if people are disappointed and if we are unfair or they are unfair, it's, it's not that good. And it kind of shows on the project. So more or less, I would say it's, 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 it's a very positive way. And we kind of, you know, they're very, very much sensitized about India. Uh, but obviously, you know, sometimes for some of these guys uh, who come from different realities, when they see on ground the poverty and the spaces we're working in and the hygiene issues over there, because we work in some serious places. Holy Roti Colony is uh, one of the spaces, but in other cities, uh, like places like Dharavi and all, there is working day in and day out is is tiring, is is challenging. Uh, it's Tell us a little challenge. bit about, about these projects that you did in Dharavi. I think you also did a massive project in uh, in Sassoon Docks a few years ago. Yeah. So, uh, so the Dharavi project, uh, I, I mean, we started the uh, art district over there. Uh, uh, in Mahim, actually, we don't call it Dharavi. It's on the, it's on the, it's on the, it's right next to Dharavi, essentially, from so the Mahim Art District. And it's also the idea was that, uh, you know, it's Mahim is so close to even places like Bandra and think places like that. It's, it's like literally a one or two journeys, two stops away. So it was a great location for us. Plus, also the the space itself, Dharavi's, it's amazing space, right? I mean, the movies written about it and movies made on it rather. But it's very self-sustaining. Uh, the people who live there are, you know, live there quite harmoniously. Uh, you know, they have the largest, one of the largest recycling uh, units in Bombay or in the world over there. You know, they recycle a lot, a lot of craft, a lot of people. So I think that kind of worked really uh, well for us. And, and, you know, over the years, we've kind of, I can show you some images. Uh, over the years, we've uh, kind of, uh, I would say, uh, you know, built trust over there and have our own team. So, People who, when we started out in Bombay with the first festival, we met some kids from Dharavi and they took us to their house and, and we saw it from their perspective. And, and, and you know, that really changed our change because suddenly we had a in to a buy, a buy in into the community with the people who were working with us. And they were really, really young at that time. They were probably 18 or 17. And today, after five years, they still work with us. And with their help and with their knowledge and with understanding a little Dharavi, we've kind of created a small space, which is like a to a, a district in, in, in Mahim, which is right there. Uh, so that's, that, you know, that was really amazing because the fact that those people are still working with us and they're very important part of start uh, and what we've achieved uh, over there was amazing. So these are, these are unusual spaces where you don't expect to see art in Dharavi. You don't expect to see art or you don't even expect artists to engage with communities like the Fisher Folk community in Bombay. And then I think you also work with the Aga Khan Trust and that community uh, there by Humayun's yeah. tomb in, um, yeah. in Delhi. Um, 
uh, I'm curious to know what are the different, uh, you know, do you have a method to document the different kinds of engagements that these projects evoke? Uh, we have a, yeah, we obviously do document them, but we also, uh, within our festivals, uh, uh, we, we have community engagements, which are of two, two types, I would say. One is obviously uh, artist driven uh, engagement or an interaction or however you call it. And one is an NGO driven. So we, for example, we work with various NGOs, like you see over here, uh, with the Aga Khan foundation of cultural foundation. We did something over here. Uh, you know, and, and, and these are the kind of women from Nizamuddin who have been doing Sanji work. So we call them to work with uh, a Polish artist. Uh, uh, and, and so they both exchange their techniques. And so, you know, the Polish artists also taught them stenciling. So they did the stenciling aspect of it. Uh, and it was quite close to their practice anyway, the Sanji work. So, and, and finally, what happened was that this artist, Nespoon, she only works, she doesn't work with color. But for the first time, she did make, make roses and she took inspiration from all the, uh, from the workshop, which happened uh, and, uh, and, and kind of put that on the mural as well. Uh, similarly, I would say, uh, you know, within the collaterals, you know, we've, this is another upcycling workshop, which we did. Again, the materials over here, uh, Merchant Market has lots of tailors. It traditionally has been a tailor colony. Uh, we took old pieces of cloth and, you know, kind of uh, got a, foundation to help us and, you know, got people from Lodi Colony who was interested in doing, uh, uh, you know, doing an upcycling workshop, making, uh, making bags. Similarly, you know, uh, in terms of another kind of a, 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 a collaboration was with Access for All, with kids with uh, disability, uh, with, uh, with uh, essentially, uh, uh, they can't see. So, um, uh, so we try to create a couple of the artworks in Braille so that, you know, they could at least feel what was happening and we did a tour for them. So there are various kinds of realities which we interact with uh, on, on a very ongoing basis so that also we try to have a more inclusive approach of start of, of the, of the foundation of, of rather the art district and try to see and try to experiment if something good can come out. Right. And hopefully try to even suggest things in the future. Like for example, for Lodi colony, now that there are people over there, uh, people go and see art. Uh, we, are, we are trying to add another layer of mobility over there, right? So can we make it a friendly neighborhood cycle, like a, like a uh, neighborhood cycling space, right? Can we put in cycling base? Can we give cycling? Can it help with last mile connect connectivity? Um, can we take over the streets only for weekends for people to cycle? Because anyway, at any given point of time, it's happening. And because of COVID, it's happening even more. People are going out and cycling. So, so, you know, that's so these another, suggestions are from the local communities that you're working with. These suggestions are, uh, are kind of with, from the local community as well, uh, because they would love to see spaces. The Lodi colony is not that congested. You won't see too many cars except for two main artery roads. Uh, but it would be nice to see that culture, you know, even to eliminate that aspect of it. So it's, it's not only about the art, which we do our interventions go beyond the art. Art is obviously a final outcome which tells all these amazing stories, but it's more about how we can engage the space, the community. Can we work, work in the urban aspect of it? Can we put furniture? We put in some toilets as well at some point during Lodi Art Colony, uh, uh, during, during making the art district, it stayed for two years. Uh, we did some ecological toilets. So it goes beyond just the art aspect of uh, what we do. You know, performances on the streets, for example, during the festivals, we literally take over the streets, uh, the music, to poetry, uh, and it's great to take over the streets of Lodi because you know it's it's your space finally, and uh, and uh, uh, it it you know it gets that freedom as well, and even the locals really supported it. The the, the authorities, the police, they supported it, uh, which was amazing, you know. So the the approach that you're going towards is is a bottom top approach. Is that is that it? It's it's both actually. It's conversations are bottom top and um, top to bottom as well because we we do need the help because the municipal bodies and the government is powerful. They, if they want to see the change, they can make it. And there are only the small changes we want. We're not asking for funds or lots of backing or anything like that. We are we are asking for doing small things which are within their powers, using their resources which are not being used given to us, so we can do something in the space. So our ask is little, and we are ready to work both architecturally planning wise, art wise, to see how we can make it better for the authorities and for the people who are living there. 
Um, and I'm curious to know what is the relationship between artistic autonomy and collaborative modes of production? I think in some of our conversations, you'll had mentioned that in some murals, some communities favored more geometric patterns rather than human figures. There are a few walls where we kind of like do what, what, they, uh, what the community wants, but at the same time, it's up to the artist to decide uh, what they want to do. Yeah, I think and that more, more from the perspective the of Hyderabad as well, where, where we work with the, with the community in, in the Makta artistry, I think that's what the question Yeah, like that way, um, yeah, like Makta is a fairly, uh, Makta, MS Makta, that's what it's, it's a neighborhood which is uh, near Hussein Sagar Lake uh, in Hyderabad. Uh, it's predominantly, uh, there is like a, a, it's a mixed neighborhood, but there are like uh, Muslims also live there. And keeping that in mind, we try and not to do any figurative artworks there. And we kind of like try and uh, do more abstract art without any faces or without any kind of like eyes or any of these things, which is normally not accepted that way. So we uh, kind of keep that in mind as well in terms of whatever, whatever we do, we need to make sure that it uh, yeah, fits well with the with the space. Just one of the uh, example of Mukta. So in many of the projects that both you and Arjuna are talking about, you have turned um, an artist collective. So this this group of artists that that came out and decided to paint walls by night, you managed to 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 institutionalize it and and make it quite a popular form of experiencing art in our, in our public spaces. What have been some of the challenges at, at making that happen? And also bringing, bringing art to communities where you don't expect to, to experience it at all. Uh, from our, uh, I mean, we still don't, don't think that it's, uh, it's popular. Uh, we think it's like still very small uh, and it needs to kind of like, uh, go much bigger than what it is right now because i mean whenever it kind of like comes to our our culture like especially whenever it comes to culture we kind of like talk about cricket and bollywood and between the two we kind of like done with most of the things and we kind of like art kind of like somewhere like you know probably one or two percent while we do believe that visual arts do have a larger appeal and we kind of like at one point all of us did drawing and all of us were interested in uh, painting but at one point we kind of like stopped doing that because that most of 99% of the people thinks that that's not the career. It's not going to get you any, like it's not a career to look to get into while we do believe that like the people we work with, that it's art can also be a, a career. And when it's going to be taken up by masses in India, that's where actually the real movement will start. So it's, we are kind of like, I think we are very far from there. And you had mentioned that in your, like recently you did your projects in Chennai. Yeah. And the local, the local authorities were actually very thankful that, that you all had come out and done these murals and the, the community engagement projects that you had done actually helped to reduce the spread of the coronavirus in that area. Yes. It actually, after our involvement in the art district, it really uh, kind of like formed a sense of community between the uh, between the neighborhood, like basically this whole uh, Kannaginagar. And for the authorities, what really helped is uh, when we worked here, our team, one of the members from our team, were also kind of like going door to door, telling everyone what's going on, what are we doing, how are we doing, and that kind of like made up a system within the space which was uh, the reaching community. And when the COVID struck, that really helped the authorities to kind of like get in touch with people, tell them what to do. At the same time, it also helped in uh, uh, relief packages. Um, we kind of like also made sure that like people were also like, you know, got what they wanted during the lockdown. Uh, and all of these efforts really uh, helped authority to contain the virus uh, much better than what they could do in the other parts of the city, like similar examples, but it was dif difficult, while here it was a little easier that way.
to uh, and it is purely because of the um, the community engagement yeah and especially because it happened we were still working in march so it was fresh all lines of communication were open with all the stakeholders of the community and we literally went uh, we, we got lucky and we finished you know after uh, we finished our showcase you can see on the on on the screen we did a street exhibition and uh, you know uh, various kinds of uh, uh, art projects and uh, uh, and workshops uh, over there and finally uh, i think it was on the 16th or the 17th we did the showcase with the community over there where they all showcased their works and they did dance and you know every all, all the subcultures kind of came together we had a dj and it was just for everyone to celebrate the art district and i think that level of engagement was there and finally unfortunately covid happened and there was need help needed from the commissioner point of view level and they stopped everything focusing on this and when numbers were going up over here i believe what we've been told is that the 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 kind of communication channel which was left open and left behind by the efforts of both the commissioner the people and us really helped them uh to keep this you know help them at least having some sort of a system and it also cleaned out a lot to be honest we cleaned a lot of space before we started work so there was a lot of footpaths made the the drainage is also kind of a lot of them were kind of fixed and covered uh, so yeah that kind of also okay so um are these projects that you have produced in different locations are they are they permanent or is you know will it constantly be evolving with new new artists coming in and and repainting or or is there space to evolve these these projects and the relationships that you have cultivated mm, like street art in nature is not is not a permanent thing uh, and street artist uh, in general are also uh, not very attached to their wall it's like once they finish they finish and then they move on because it's there in public space anyone can destroy damage anything can happen uh, and just being out there like you know the love which a studio artist has for his own work is very different than the like love which a street artist has for like their their works it's mostly about documenting the work and then kind of like moving on from there uh, and it depends on the space to space where sometimes the weather conditions the light conditions also like affect them to answer your question whether we will be kind of like going over these pieces or not not so far we haven't kind of like uh, since last 5 years and we work with uh, asian paint and we use the best of materials um, we work with like you know the product ultima which kind of like comes with almost a 7 years of uh, out of warranty so it at least we make sure that like what we do is is there as it is for 7 years as long as the surface is good uh depending on lodi like lodi has almost 100 walls we have done 55 so we can like still half way there while uh, when in mahim yeah we still have some more walls you know so depending on the yeah by the time we probably do few more we'll probably start painting uh yeah but if the lodi colony is not demolished by then <laughs> which is also like we are that's also what uh, the talks are as we speak right now but that's that's quite disappointing if, if that it's going that to happen. Would happen yeah um i'm also wondering how do you is there a way that you guys have to evaluate if a project is successful or it wasn't the success of these things cannot be measured in like in a short time these are like uh, a long time projects which will have its own uh, um, it does take time to uh, understand what's uh, what's the result on ground is like so i mean it's been 5 years so we can say that it's we are still kind of like uh, new that way uh, to understand what the result will be but yeah i i mean for all the kids you see there now they're going to grow up in an environment which is going to be like their imagination is going to be very different uh, in terms of you know the scale and the visuals and what they see and their aesthetic sense as well compared to like uh, living with the blank walls all year so yeah it's actually uh, but mostly it's kind of like uh, it's mostly positive 
I think also in terms of the numbers, the sheer numbers of people that have access and that get exposed to your projects and that get involved in various ways, that itself is a is a measure is a way or a tool to measure how a project has has done, how how it has fared, correct? Yeah, like I mean, you look at this road, I and mean, there are probably like thousands of people must be crossing this road every day, right? And uh, that really. Uh, yeah, it's also the the context as well. Like this particular piece is one of my favorite from from Dharavi by Guido Van Helton. He's uh, painted b boys on the building, and it's kind of like still merging with the whole landscape. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's still very striking as somebody may miss it. But um, yeah, it has a, a a different kind of impact on the um, communities living around it. For sure. You've done several projects here in Goa, right? How did audiences or local communities react to those projects? Goa uh, is, uh, I mean, Goa is a very different kind of landscape uh, compared to any of these, you know, mega cities. Uh, and uh, even earlier, it, it was the same thing. We work with Serendipity basically, and that's how with Serendipity uh, we've uh, been working in Goa for the last four, five, four years, five years now. And uh, it was the same thing, kind of like telling people that we want to paint. Uh, people are like, why? And then you kind of like explain this, that. We also face like, obviously like, you know, a difficulty in Goa as well. Uh, but uh, later on now, I mean, after these many years of going and asking for permission in Goa has become much more easier. Now somebody will say, yeah, short, sure, like you can paint, which was not the case for the first one or two years. So what, at least what we understand, the more we paint and more we do it, the people are more open to it. Uh, but in terms of, I remember seeing at the time that there was this huge hoarding outside the outside the airport there was this auntie i, I presume yeah. how did people react i mean did you feel that that work reflected the social cultural context of, of goa the the point of point was for that uh, those goan cutouts was mainly uh, kind of inspired from the like south indian political and these uh, tamil cinema uh, you know cutouts where the, mostly you mostly see an actor or a politician or somebody who you know at that kind of scale. But uh, if we put like uh, just a Govan, different Govan characters, uh, and these are the people who kind of like I have interacted, met on the street, in Panjim, uh, in different parts, and then kind of like putting them up, uh, and they're just like common people, but this kind of, once you put, put them on a scale, it has like different kind of uh, connotation. I uh, like funnily we had a uh, um, the driving school uh, uncle uh, cut out of the uncle we put it outside Adil Shah and next day it was uh, uh, Parikar's birthday and uh, these guys are like oh you have you guys have put like Manohar you know, Parikar and we're like it was uh, just a normal driving school uncle who kind of just lives very close to that. And we had to take it out, take it down, because there was a discussion in the parliament about this thing that there is this, we have kind of like, you know, put up this big statue, statue. And it was also next to, uh, uh, the reason why the offense was there is because it was next to the Bandurkar uh, statue, which was smaller and this cutout was bigger. So they were like, how can you have a larger Parikar statue next to, next to this? And we had to take it down. So there could be like, misunderstandings which was not the case but yeah it did happen so but but there are like very uh, uh, sometimes it does happen that uh, when we were painting the the fintan maggie uh, mural the the wall owner agreed the where we had to access the wall that those guys did not agree to let us come in and we had to go with the artist artists had to kind of like uh, convince them that like you know i'm uh, they were like, they were worried about what if the lift drops? What if like something happens? So the artist like, if lift drops, I die. And I'm kind of like ready to paint. Would you like, let me do it. Uh, 
and we had to sign um, an indemnity bond agreement like on a stamp paper with the with the wall own, wall owner to to paint that wall so there are times we can also get into these uh, intricate legal uh, things to get permissions but it's also interesting to know how both on one hand your roles are actually quite stretched but also the role of the artist so these different strategies and methodologies that start to come into play so you guys are curators and artists and negotiating with you know public authorities and also trying to get licenses or permissions to paint a wall and then um, trying to convince local bodies or communities to keep the work for a little bit longer than, than anticipated and, and artists themselves. Tell us a little bit about that because it's actually a very complex um, it, uh, it, space it, that you guys are, are, are navigating. Yeah, actually, um, you know, when we, when we kind of started the foundation, we thought we'll put 20% of our time into it uh, and 80% to do our general jobs. But I think it's flipped now because as you said, it's, there are so many stakeholders we need to speak to and get everyone on board. Uh, we have to put more time uh, into the foundation and because also we kind of love it to do it because it's, it's given us a lot of uh, happiness as well and, and the amazing projects. So I think that negotiation and, you know, luckily for us, uh, I think we have five of us who are, and obviously we have a great team uh, who are always supporting us and actually now leading most of the projects after five years. So all of us kind of bring different skills and then we kind of divide ourselves to do specific things like Hanif would do the artistic aspect of it, the communication, the strategy. I would do the overall thing. Hanish would work on the project management and government liaisoning. Uh, Julia would work with the communities. Julia and Akshat would work with the communities. Julia would also be the curator and Akshat would be documenting the festival. So I think between ourselves, then we, once we all put our 80% or 90% time into it, these kind of realities do end up meeting. But it is, it is, there are a lot of power structures on, in the streets as well. You have to respect everyone from the engineer who's been, who's been looking at after those building or assets of the government to, 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 to other decision makers within the ministry of bureaucracy and then to the stakeholders. Uh, but I think what happens is that at least from the government point of view, we are a bridge between a conversation, a positive conversation on the streets because they want to enable us also because they know the intent is to, to create something create and to create a, a togetherness and a community spirit. And from their point of view also, then we kind of become a, we don't become a mediator for grievances, but at least we can put some things out which are on our control when it comes to art design or the planning of things. So that kind of becomes a kind of, we kind of become a medium point for these two stakeholders, uh, which was not there to that level because not only it's visual arts, but it's also participative stuff. It's interactive stuff, which we do. Uh, it's bringing everyone together. Uh, Actually, yeah. Like, yeah, just to kind of like add into that, right? add into the complexity of it. Like normally when you are standing on a street, you don't, uh, I mean, if you're just sit standing in a city and you don't know like what it is, but the road belongs to PWD, the footpath belongs to the municipal corporation, the electric poles belong to the electric pole thing. Like the Lodi colony itself has been divided into New Delhi Corporation on the other side, MCD South on the other side, like a one road which divides the, the colony. The two different uh, municipal bodies govern that, but at the same time, the the colony is CPWD. But then we have to like work with also DUSC to make sure. So there are so many government bodies which come into play, uh, and they all have roles. But and it is somehow become very complex. Uh, I don't know if it's like everywhere in the world, but yeah, here it's definitely like complex to really navigate through these uh, different bodies. Obviously, the more we have been working, the easier it's, it is getting. But it, do, it did take some time for us to at least to realize and understand that how city has been divided between various authorities and uh, yeah, the different owners managing it. I think we'll start to see more artists coming out and working in our streets. Yeah, sure. Uh, they are. I mean, they're already... Uh, there are more and more artists uh, who's out there uh, who are like full-time artists now and kind of like mostly surviving on on art and public art 
which was which was not thinkable like unthinkable few years ago uh, covid has like put a little bit of a hold on that which is like everything else but at the same time yeah there are like uh, people who's now starting to make a living out of uh, urban art and how did you manage to convince government authorities that street art doesn't need to be you know those social social um, comments that that you that you used to see i think say 10 years ago at at train stations or walls how did you manage to change the language and introduce uh, a new kind of aesthetics to the urban landscape simply by not doing what was happening and kind of like actually the difference between the sunday painting and the work we do is basically the the work we do, the artists are professional artists who are actually yeah you yeah. know they're pro and that's what they do they work on street compared to like you go on a sunday like nice weather paint something you know some kind of social message or whatever that's a that still happens and it should happen but at the same time we are also looking at people who can make careers out of this and that's basically by more people coming and painting it taking it that seriously will bring that quality also on the street um i think we have time for for one last question are there any projects that that we should be looking forward to or traveling to when 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 we are finally permitted to start traveling again i think uh, we we've been told and kind of realized that maybe we can still do projects uh because we are in public spaces uh actually having a chat with you guys also you know kind of reaffirmed that uh last week so yeah we are excited we worked currently we just finished a project in mahim uh obviously with total care and caution uh it was the, the it it just makes the process much longer but it's worth it we did a great mural over there uh, giving a ode to the frontline workers at the mahim station uh i think you're hoping for a to get this conversation started work more uh, or work more at least across our art districts uh and build on something not lose the year at least even if it's 3 3 4 murals uh and and some of the other stuff which we want to do so we are working towards that and gathering momentum and courage and and confidence because everything is required right now because we want to make it a positive narrative now uh we board sir in office as well uh and uh, we also working on a digital project as well just to respond to the times and i uh, hanif can probably tell you more about uh, the digital project yeah yeah we working on a, a project we calling it start imagine where we would want artists to imagine uh, public art in cities and kind of like uh, take that as a like festival of ideas where artists would kind of like pitch in ideas working with ar and working with uh, uh, simulation to embed art in the cities uh, which is going to be mostly a digital art but there will be some kind of physical presence where one would be able to scan the code and probably it should be able to see the artwork so that's uh, that's one of the intent uh, the project which we are working on right now let's see yeah uh, we still we don't we still don't know if like you know uh, how it's going to see light of the day all right um and on that note i i want to thank both um you hanif and arjun for for your time and for an engaging conversation on uh, on on street art and the complexities of that and uh, i thank our audiences for being always engaged and curious and um, thank you for 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 being here and i wish everyone a good evening and keep listening in thank you